स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया we are going to talk about heat equation so next few classes we are only going to concentrate on this heat equation now let us start by writing out what it means what is a heat equation so essentially uh, generally speaking we will write it like this ut minus laplacian of u equals to let's say f right and this f will depend on x and t clear now so this um, let me write it properly and then we'll explain what i i mean by this so this will be in some domain yeah we will write down all this domain and everything but first of all let let us explore more what this means so let's say that's your one okay this is defined in some domain now what is u u yeah here is the unknown in this the unknown clear unknown function function okay and and you see here i write ut so basically u depends on a variable t right of course because otherwise there is no point of writing ut and i also wrote a x here yes so what all of this means see and here we assume we assume assume x is in rn clear x is in rn and t lies between 0 and infinity clear so essentially see t here i mean this equation this is a part of a so let me put it like this it is a part of something called the evolution equation right evolution evolution equation now what is the evolution equation evolution equations are those equations which you know evolve with time so over time let's say you are you are modeling some phenomena which changes with time right those phenomena whatever the equation you can generate with those phenomena they are called evolution equation because they evolve with time okay either they generate degenerate with time or the other way around okay but here, and here what is happening is this as you can see this equation has a ut term so essentially this will depend on time right and that is why it is a part of a evolution this is one of a evolution equation yeah the other one which you will study later is called a wave equation okay so let us again come back to this equation let's say x is in rn right so for let's say for n equals to 3 let does that mean yeah n equals to 3 how does this equation looks like see first of all u u in this case will be function of x y z and t right because uh, you see uh, uh, you should contain uh, see okay uh, there is one here you, you might get confused here let me put it this way it is x1 x2 and x3 clear where where x is given by x1 x2 x3 that is in r3 okay so you have a component from r3 the first three component and there is a component of time okay this t c t we are assuming from zero infinity so t is a time variable so there are two kind of variables here okay so uh, let me let me put it this way two variables two uh, two uh, kind of variables okay kind of variable of variable what are those number one one is called a spatial variable okay spatial variable so we'll call it a spatial variable what is the spatial variable here the spatial variable is x y z here okay so or sorry not x y z x1 x2 x3 see i i wrote x is in r3 here so that is why you know i can't use x y z so here x1 x2 x3 that is the spatial variable okay okay and there is another variable which is the time variable right and the time variable time variable 
so of course whenever we are as uh, you see working with time variable we are assuming that this will be always positive right so uh, see we always assume that whenever we are starting out a process we are assuming that the time is zero at that time and after that it is moving forward so time t will be always between zero and infinity right so this is the time variable so this is given by t which is greater than zero right so spatial variable and time variable okay and now let us look at this equation see this equation ut is your uh, partial derivative of u with respect to t minus laplacian of u this laplacian see u is a function of x1 x2 x3 and t so generally speaking okay in general case generally speaking uh, you see if u is a function of x1 x2 x3 and t okay what is laplacian of u it is essentially u x1 xi xi sum plus u of t t right okay that should be your laplacian because if u looks like this laplacian of u generally speaking if it is written like laplacian of u it means this okay but here but here this is not the case is not the case clear yes so here this laplacian is with respect to the spatial variable so what i mean by this so essentially essentially let me put it this way essentially one uh, boils down to this form boils down to the following to the following this is ut is ut there is nothing to do here minus laplacian of u is u x1 x1 plus u x2 x2 so basically this laplacian is with respect to the spatial variable so with respect to x okay with respect to x okay plus u xn xn sorry x3 x3 this is equals to f of x t right that's your one so this is refreshed as one okay so of course if x uh, i mean if you're taking x to be in rn then it will go on to in r xn right and then u x x3 x3 plus dot dot u xn xn right it will go on like this so this is called the c so in any of these cases you see what is changing essentially is this x s x can be in r1 r2 r3 rn right yeah but this time variable is always there in between zero and infinity okay so oh, there is a small notation which you are going to use so basically this is just a nomenclature you can say okay so one dimensional we say one dimensional dimensional heat equation heat equation basically means that the dimension x varies in r okay so basically x is one dimension so basically that will look like ut minus u x x equals to zero that's your one dimensional equation see t is always between zero and infinity so there is nothing i mean t does not do anything all uh, i mean whatever if there is a change in dimension that has to be in x right okay so that is why whenever we say one dimensional heat equation we mean ut minus u x x only x variable is there so x is in r right x is in r and t greater than equal zero okay now uh, if i say let's say n dimensional heat equation you can understand n dimensional heat equation uh, of course it means that you write it like this ut minus u so let's say ut equals to so you see here i am just assuming f is zero okay here i am just assuming the homogeneous problem i mean of course if you uh, don't if you do not have a homogeneous problem of course there is a f yeah that is that is there so um, uh, I'm just writing it to be f equals to zero for now. Yeah, I'm just assuming f equals to zero. Here also f equals to zero I'm assuming. Okay, so f is equals to zero I'm assuming. I mean it may not be zero. Yeah. In that case, you just add a f. Yeah. So this is n dimensional equation is x1 x1 plus u x2 x2 and it will go on and it will be u xn xn. Clear? So that is your n dimensional heat equation. So it's very easy. Yes. Uh, now what we do is we look at uh, some boundary conditions okay so what sort of equations are we talking about here so uh, let's look at some boundary conditions which we actually encounter here okay so bound uh, and for now let's just uh, look at this problem only one dimension i mean you see in n dimension also same sort of boundary condition will work but but for now let's just concentrate on one dimension okay 
so let us let us for time being time being concentrate great on 1d heat equation heat equation yeah okay okay and what we are going to do is we are going to write down the different boundary conditions which you can encounter here boundary conditions clear okay what are the boundary conditions so essentially you have this equation ut minus ux x equals to 0 but what are the boundary conditions so before we look at the boundary condition you you can guess that we can actually we do have to uh, define what the uh, you know domain is yeah but uh, so uh, you see i do not want to jump into a more complicated domain yes first of all let's do it for a one dimensional thing and we'll look at boundary condition and then we'll go from there to a higher dimension yeah that will make things easier because uh, to be honest with you heat equations are a little tricky okay it's not very uh, it's not easy like a uh, laplace equation okay so uh, first thing first let's write out the dirichlet boundary condition okay so essentially i am looking for this equation ut minus uxx equals to 0 one dimensional heat equation right and with this i am writing down the dirichlet boundary condition dirichlet boundary condition okay what is the dirichlet boundary condition dirichlet boundary condition is essentially you see uh, the x i am choosing it from let's say uh, some 0 and uh, t okay 0 and t of course t can be infinity that's not a point here yeah? but uh, i'm just for now let's just say t positive and uh, 0 t x i am choosing from 0 t so dirichlet boundary condition is u at 0 t that is equals to u l t okay this is equals to 0 so x i am choosing from 0 to l clear okay oh sorry 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 here i shouldn't write x this is t sorry this is t huh? i mean of course t can be capital t can be infinity yes i mean the, you can just choose it for for now just choose t between 0 and t where t is positive it can be infinity also okay and x let's say for now i'm just choosing x huh, between 0 and l yeah and uh, this is the Dirichlet boundary condition so basically it is saying u at the point 0 t equals to u at the point l t equals to 0 so what it is saying is something like this let's let's draw some pictures here okay uh, let's say this is your x variable and that's your t t axis okay and 0 to l that's your x and 0 to capital t so this is the this is the domain where you are working with okay this is the domain this is the domain where we are working with and in this domain u satisfies this equation and what is the boundary condition u for x equals to 0 and t equals to t u at uh, 0 sorry u 0 t and u l t is 0 so essentially u 0 t and u l t okay so on this line u is 0 and on this line u is 0 clear u 0 t equals to u l t equals to 0 so if this something like this happens okay then uh, you of course have uh, it is a uh, Dirichlet boundary condition the condition is called a Dirichlet boundary condition some idea of what heat equation looks like let us look at uh, the n dimensional general heat equation yes and how to work with that uh, equation so first thing first n dimensional dimensional heat equation as you can understand whenever i am talking about n dimensional heat equation i of course mean n is greater than equal one so essentially whatever i am going to do i am obviously um, i mean of course one dimensional heat equation is involved here so again let me write down what is n dimensional heat equation so in uh, general terms you you can just write it like this i mean without any specific you know notation u u t minus u x1 x1 minus u x2 x2 minus u x n x n this is equals to 
let us say a function which of course depends on x1 x2 and xn and of course you have this t variable right and this is defined in omega t i will define what omega t is yes this these are complicated uh, objects here yeah? i have to define what omega t is or essentially if you want to write it properly yes we write it like this u t generally speaking we write it like this laplacian of u so please remember this laplacian is with respect to x only the x variable equals to f of x t okay for x t in omega t okay so that's your eight dimensional heat equation we have explained again and what is omega t now here omega t is very interesting yeah? what is omega t see as you know whenever we say omega what do we mean by omega it's of course an open set right it's an open smooth uh, smooth open set we are always considering so uh, here omega t which is defined by omega cross 0 open t closed okay this is omega t equals to this yeah where omega okay is an open connected connected smooth and bounded domain and t greater than 0 fixed is this clear so what is omega for now you see whenever i write omega t like this yes uh, i mean this t this boundedness i will explain to you when we need boundedness when we don't but generally speaking this boundedness so remark uh, generally speaking boundedness is not required whenever it is required i will just let you know okay so uh, maybe i can just remove boundedness from here it, it does not i mean right now it does not matter i will explain to you when we need so let, let us just write down this domain and t positive yes yes boundedness is not required see boundedness we will assume later yeah for now it is only this so let us take up an example and see what this omega t means see uh, so um, essentially what is omega omega t omega t is omega which is an open set yeah that is the important open set so uh, of course this connected smooth uh, all this is uh, included but the important thing is omega is open and t lies between open zero close t please remember this thing open zero close t so what does that mean see let's say that's your omega let, let us draw a nice omega yes okay that's a nice omega and um, let us let us just uh, do it like this you see uh, let's say this is your uh, three dimensional sorry not such three dimensional this is n dimensional thing right so that is why uh, how do i put it maybe i can just maybe i can just sorry let me draw this thing first huh? So let's say this is your Rn space, okay, not this direction, the whole this, this is your Rn plane and that's your T direction, clear? This is your Rn. So, um, I mean, for intuition, just, let's just think that is your R2, right? This plane is R2 and that is the third dimension, which is the time dimension and it starts from 0 to infinity, clear? Okay, and in this thing, let's say that's your domain and where is this domain? Omega, this domain is in R2 r n i mean for intuition think of this as r2 okay so this omega is in r2 and then you have 0 t right so 0 t something like this the same thing will happen over here okay so basically it is a can think of a, a can of a soda or something a yeah? can of co coke or something yes okay so omega t let's understand what omega t is so omega t contains omega so what is omega see here i drew it like this but omega is whatever is inside right it does not contain the boundary okay so omega cross 0 t so t where, where is t 0 in rn this on the base t 0 here t 0 right so basically this is t equals to 0 this is t equals to 0 
and what is t here t equals to t here equals t equals to t so essentially 0 to 2 is this see what it says is what is omega t it contains i mean of course does it contain this so basically think of this can okay think of this can now does the base of the can this base is it included in it of course not why because t equals to base it corresponds to omega cross t equals to 0 right does t is t equals to 0 there no of course not so the base is not there okay so uh, important thing is base is not included base is not included in omega t of course it is true right base is not included in omega t okay let's just see that uh, so omega t is omega cross 0 t closed okay now what about the top part the top the uh, you know the uh, lid of the can yeah or the, or, the, or the cylinder whatever you want to call it huh? is the lid included so the lid means you see forget about this boundary yeah that boundary is never included but whatever the uh, inside is the inside lid okay is that included t equals to t is included so the uh, upper lid okay uh, how do i put it the upper portion yeah you can just uh, uh, maybe uh, the top portion actually uh, the top portion or the top uh, is included uh, let me write it included, uh, included in omega t okay now let's see what else is included is this boundary included here this boundary clear for t equals to 0 is this boundary included here of course not why because omega does not contain the boundary omega does not have any right on the boundary it has uh, it contains points in the interior it does not have any point in the boundary so boundary you take any point on the boundary and t equals to 0 in this here right so basically that point is not included in omega t so the boundary term so this this particular line i mean this thing cos t equals to 0 and the sides this thing does it um, i mean is it there in omega t of course it is not included in omega t okay so the vertical sides let me put it any, anyway so this is important yes the vertical sides side what i mean by vertical sides is the side of the can which you can see so think of a coke okay uh, you know those 330 ml coke bottles okay uh, cans cans the side of the cans which you can see from your eyes that is not included is omega t okay what is included is whatever is inside yeah of course the base is the base included so, so think of the base to be you know smooth base it's not smooth in a can but just think of that as smooth the base is included no the base is not included what about the boundary boundary is also not included what about the you know side profile which you see from the side that side vertical side they are not included are not included why it is not included in omega t because you see any side if you take any point on the side what is it it corresponds to uh, some t equals to t1 and x is on the boundary of del omega that is the sides right the vertical side and the um, omega does not contain the boundary right so the vertical sides are also not included in this okay right now uh, so the top is included the top part is included vertical sides are not included the bottom is not included right and whatever is inside of course it is included so that is your omega t okay right now we will define another important property so this is omega t let us say that is here this is one and we define okay so here this is are the things which makes parabolic equation a little complicated and we define um, uh, a new boundary a defined a parabolic boundary right we define a parabolic boundary boundary what is parabolic boundary we will write it like this of omega t of course of omega t which is given by is del omega t clear that's your parabolic boundary i mean generally some books you will see it is written as del omega t or in some books it is also written as gamma of t clear and that is again defined by so basically um, i mean this is not the definition it is just a notation it can be written as gamma of t which is defined by okay omega t bar minus omega t just think about it okay what does it mean it means that you take the whole omega t take the closure of that thing okay the omega t is this in whatever is there you take the whole closure so now if you are taking the closure 
okay just think of omega t and think if you are taking the closure of that thing what will happen think of that the coke ball can okay it actually includes everything so whatever is in the top whatever is in the bottom whatever is in the side whatever is in inside everything is included in omega t bar right yeah okay so the liquid along with whatever the surface you can see from outside everything is included there now what is omega t as i have said, told you omega t is whatever is inside and the top part excluding these vertical sides and the bottom okay so what is del omega t if you just think of the parabolic boundary the parabolic boundary consists of the bottom part of course and the vertical size of omega plus zero t okay but not the top not this part not the top part okay so it let me put it this way the parabolic boundary parabolic boundary okay consists of consists of the bottom and the vertical sides vertical sides okay vertical sides uh, of omega cross 0 t close 0 t yeah please remember this is close 0 t yes of course but not the top that i explained right not the top now before we move on i really really want you to understand that what omega t specifically is so take some points on the you know omega t or omega t bar and just think about your i mean take some time think where omega t bar or where omega t uh, i mean which points are in omega t bar which points are in the parabolic boundary clear yeah? that is very important and why is this important because that later on you will see that while we talk about you know uh, maximum principles and all it is very important to understand where the maximum is happening okay so parabolic boundaries are very important to study so let's say uh, for example what i meant by this let's say you take a point here on the top of the point t equals to t and x equals to sub, some x naught which is in the omega okay do you think that point is there in um, uh, the parabolic boundary gamma t this is gamma t right do you think it is in gamma t of course not it's not there okay what about this point a point here okay do you think this point is on the parabolic boundary of course it is that point is in, on the boundary so let's say uh, so for example example let's put an example let's say this point this point is x let's say this is uh, x1 and capital t yeah that is x1 and capital t this point so x1 and capital t okay do you think that is on gamma t yeah of course it is yeah so this is in gamma uh, t but but not in not in omega t of course it is not right i mean that is by definition of gamma t yeah there's so but of course it is gamma t bar i mean that is always there what about this point let's say there is a point here which is like a x naught capital t okay do you think that point is there mm, so x naught capital t is not in gamma t okay but is in omega t clear okay as you know that we want to study the well posedness well posedness of the n so i will write it like this n dimensional heat equation i will write it like this n dimensional heat equation okay so please remember this thing whenever i write it like n heat equation i mean the spatial dimension is in rn it is n dimensional heat equation okay so basically the our question is to talk, I mean, our idea uh, what we want to achieve is to talk about the i mean know about well posedness of n dimensional heat equation now if you remember if we want to study something like this what are the things which you need to do the first thing first of course yeah uh, but uh, before we talk about well posedness uh, uh, i mean of course so well posedness of which problem let let us put that so essentially we are looking for this problem ut 
minus Laplacian of u equals to f as I told you f depends on x and t and this Laplacian is with respect to x right and this is in omega t okay omega t is just the parabolic boundary so you remember what is omega t it is omega cross 0 t closed clear t is uh, greater than 0 some for so for some t positive okay so t positive we are always so i am not writing all that all, every time you do realize that t is always positive capital t is always positive and this this particular thing specifies the time variable so ut minus laplacian u equals to 0 and i will be talking about the well postness of which problem the dirichlet problem as you remember i i talked about different boundary conditions right in one dimensional edit equation we talked about uh, you know uh, i mean dirichlet problem neumann problem so here i'm just generalizing this thing and i want to talk about the well postness of dirichlet problem so how does that look like it looks like u equals to g on gamma so which is omega t bar minus omega t okay so the parabolic boundary parabolic boundary so is this clear what am i saying i am saying that i want our my u to be is equal uh, equals to some function g of course we want all of this to be continuous okay to be some function g on the parabolic boundary and such that u satisfies this equation uh, in the in omega t yeah so whenever we say something is a solution what do i mean by this so let's write down the definition of solution classical solution this is called a classical solution okay classical solution so u in this is a new notation okay c21 omega t yes c21 omega t so essentially if you remember what is uh, i mean uh, whenever we are writing something like you know uh, c1 c2 you remember what i meant by this thing right what do i mean i mean that you are basically looking at uh, laplace equation if you remember okay we are basically talking about uh, twice differentiable function laplace equation if you remember yeah but here what we are going to do here is uh, whenever we are saying that um, uh, classical solution we mean a u which is in c21 omega t intersection uh, c omega t bar okay so let me explain what i mean by this c21 omega t is to this upper the subscript or the superscript sorry is 2 that will represent the x variable see in earlier case in the laplacian case there were only spatial variables there was no time variable right it was not an evolution equation for laplace case so there was no you know uh, the two parties uh, so basically you know there is no spatial and time variable and hence you do not have to signify c2 gives you everything here you do not need two variables for in the time right you do not need twice regularity so you do not need c2 with respect to time because only ut is there right so you just need one derivative with respect to t so that is why this is one derivative with respect to so this will actually specify what the derivative is with respect to t this will specify what the derivative is with respect to x okay special variable this is special and that is the time variable omega t of course it has to be c21 in the whatever the domain is omega cross zero t because in this omega t only this has to satisfy equation okay and for this equation to be satisfied u has to be at least twice differentiable with respect to x and once differentiable with respect to t that is what i wrote here okay intersection c omega t bar intersection c omega t bar see here whenever i am writing all that of course i am assuming that and f g are continuous whenever wherever they are defined they are continuous okay this that is always assumed okay so if g is assumed you are basically saying that u is equals to a continuous function on the parabolic boundary okay so uh, i am assuming u is bound, continuous on the boundary also so up to bar, up to the boundary okay omega t bar clear so that is what it is uh, so let's say uh, if let's call it one if u in c2 omega c21 omega t intersection c omega t bar solves one okay so basically that that is that is ut let me write it properly ut at the point xt minus laplacian of u at the point xt equals to f of xt okay 
for all x t in omega t and u of x t equals to g of x t for x t in gamma t which is the parabolic boundary okay so this should hold for all x t for all okay and this also should hold for all gamma omega t then we say we say u is a classical solution of one classical solution of one clear then you say it is a classical solution of one right now once this is taken care of now we want to talk about uh, the well posedness right now i can talk about well posedness so first thing first what do you have to do you have to find existence yes and then you have to do the uniqueness part and then uh, after you do uniqueness then the continuous dependence on boundary data for now we are just interested in finding the uniqueness clear we are just do, going to do uniqueness so essentially uh, so we are going to uh, let me put it a uh, small note kind of huh? this is not a remark it is a note we are going to use the same plan the same uh, how do i put it uh, plan maybe huh? which we used used to study heat equation okay uh, wait, wait laplace equation let's say laplace equation so basically first of all in laplace equation if you remember we started out with the uniqueness and then we went from there okay so and uh, here let me again uh, emphasize what is c 2 1 is basically it means twice differentiable with respect to x and once differentiable with respect to t clear okay now so um, uniqueness let's let's talk about uniqueness and then we will go from there uniqueness okay so we assume for uniqueness we assume that omega subset of rn is open of course you know all of that is true open connected as you guys know that this is always as you smooth but this is the extra term which i am assuming for this and bounded and bounded okay and bounded in r clear right now what we want to do is we want to talk about we want to talk about so if you are taking omega like this uh, yeah we want to see if there is a unique solution let's say if we can solve the problem does there exist a unique solution for that and what sort of problem are we talking about let me write down that problem and then it will be more clear about what uh, the problem is okay so essentially the problem will look like so consider the problem or maybe I can write down the theorem first. That will be better, no? Let me write down the theorem first. Theorem. theorem. Okay. So theorem should be um, if there exists a solution, classical solution. Whenever I mean solution, I mean classical solution. Okay. So basically classical solution okay uh, u in c21 omega t okay if there exists a, a solution because we don't know if there is a solution i'm just assuming that there is a solution if there is a solution okay of one then the solution is unique is this clear so it says that if there is a solution, it has to be unique. Yeah. Be, why I am doing it like this? Because we did not prove that there is a solution. Okay. So I initially I was try, going to write that there is this, exist a unique solution. But in that case, see, initially. So let me tell you this particular thing. So you should not do this mistake in the future. I was 
about to write the theorem like this that there exists a unique solution of one if i write it like this there is no harm in that but the thing is in that case you have to show that there is a solution and then there the solution is unique okay i am not saying that please remember this thing uh, here i am assuming that i am saying that if there exists a solution so basically i am saying that you give me a solution yeah once you give me a solution i can tell you that whether it is unique or not and in this case it is it is unique but the thing is initially i even i don't know whether there is a solution or not okay so proof let's look at the proof of this thing we'll actually prove all this that uh, how to find the solution and everything yeah but for now let's just assume that if there is a solution it has to be unique so let's say uh, u and u tilde this is your our usual thing huh? u and u tilde are two solutions are two solutions you guys know right that whenever we want to find um, uniqueness we start with two solutions okay and you define define w to be u minus u tilde okay this is what you define now once you do that then you see the linearity kicks in since u and u tilde both satisfies this equation both satisfies this equation what is the equation here both satisfies this equation what will happen that um, the u minus u tilde will satisfy the homogeneous problem f is getting cancelled out here yes so basically let me write it ut minus laplacian of u equals to f and ut u tilde t minus laplacian of u tilde equals to f if you take if you subtract it basically what will happen is u minus u tilde with respect to t minus laplacian of u minus u tilde equals to zero so this is thanks to linearity linearity see all of this is possible because these equations are linear now define define w which is u minus u tilde right once you define something like this then then w t okay oh we we did define w to be u minus u okay so i i defined it twice huh? I, I mean yeah let's just uh, not define it here huh? i will just define it here i mean it does not matter you do realize that huh? it does not matter okay so then w t minus laplacian of w this is equals to zero yeah in omega t and what about in the parabolic boundary in the parabolic boundary w is equals to zero on gamma t again the same thing happens right g and g get, gets cancelled out so in the parabolic boundary w is going to be zero okay now set the new this is the new thing yeah we set a e of t this is kind of energy at the uh, energy of the system at any time t so this is defined by integral over omega please remember this is not integral over omega t it is the only integral over omega w square x t d x because this is with respect to omega x is in omega t is in 0 t right e t i am defining this is defined for all t between 0 and capital t so essentially what am i doing I am taking any t between 0 and capital T and I am defining an energy with, at, that, at that particular time given by integral of w square x t dt. Right. So if I do that, then what is E prime of t? Prime is with respect to t. Okay. The derivative. So that is equals to integral over omega. If you take derivative with respect to t, the t gets inside, right? Because this integral is with respect to x. So I can take it inside. It becomes 2 omega of x t omega t of x t dx i hope all of you will agree with uh, me here okay so that is uh, this is e prime of t and and you see this will actually give you integral omega omega, omega of x t what is omega t it is laplacian of omega x t dx right yes or no why because you see omega satisfies this equation right so omega t is laplacian of w uh, sorry i'm saying omega right sorry sorry, sorry. this is the i mean you can call it omega you can call it w i'm really very sorry you know, for the confusion so let's just call it omega uh, w okay and this is omega 
which is omega this is w so i am taking the integral over omega of w square here 2 integral over omega w w t and 2 since w satisfies w t minus laplacian w equals to 0 so it is equals to 2 times integral w laplacian of w t yeah? okay because w t is equals to laplacian of w okay so that is why i just wrote it like this for any given t in omega so omega cross t equals to t let's say there w t is laplacian of w right because it satisfies w satisfies solves the problem so this is true now integration by parts you know our usual uh, friend integration by parts so that will give you integral over omega gradient of w uh, square t square that will give you because you see um, this is w and that is uh, i mean the integration will give you like a gradient of w square one derivative will go here it will gain one derivative will lose one derivative that is becoming this and there is a boundary term what about the boundary term the boundary term you know w is equals to zero on the boundary so, w is zero on the boundary so there is no boundary term right and this is particularly always non positive because there is a negative sign involved here right so this is non positive what does that say therefore it says that what about e of 0 let's let's look at what is e of 0 so e is defined in such a way that t equals to 0 okay it is w square x 0 okay for t equals to 0 so basically you are looking at w on the base on the base this is uh, 0 because the base is containing gamma t see let me put it this way e at the point 0 that is integral over w w square x0 dx right okay x0 t equals to 0 is basically the base that base is included in gamma t yes or no so w is 0 on the gamma t so basically you are taking the integral of 0 that is 0 okay? since x0 belongs to gamma t yeah, I, I hope this is fine because this is the bottom part of the lead, right, uh, of the can. Okay, so what do you have? You have E prime of T is non-positive, right? So that will give you E of T is less than equal E at the point 0, which is 0. Yes, but 0 less than T less than equal capital T. Yeah, this is true. So, since he is, uh, I mean, E prime is less than equal to 0, right? So, therefore, what does that say? That says that, and you see, what is the definition? So, by definition, again, by definition, you see, what is E? E is W square, integral of W square. So, W square, whatever it is, W square is always greater than equal to 0, right? It's a positive function. I am taking the integral of a positive function. So, e, this E t is always positive. So, 0 less than equal E of t less than equals to 0 for all t between this. Yes, that will give you E t is identical equals to 0. So, hence, hence E of t is identical equals to 0 for uh, I am writing this thing too many times, huh? t between 0 and t, capital 0 t. So, e t is always 0 and hence if e t is 0, what does that mean? Let us see, what is e t? e t is integral over omega w square this function, this is equals to 0. So, w is a continuous function, right? Because w solves the problem, so it is a continuous function. So, you have a, I mean w square, the integral is identically equals to 0, that will give you w square is identically equals to 0, that will give you w is identically equals to 0, it has to be, right? Yeah, because if it is positive, um, if w square is positive in some positive, uh, you know, in an open set containing omega, because and then the total contribution of et will be positive, okay? Uh, that is not happening here. So, hence, w, which is given by u minus u tilde, this is going to be 0, okay, in omega t, which is imply u is u tilde in omega t. I hope this is fine, okay. So, there is a uniqueness here, okay. Now, what we are going to do is, it is a time dependent variant, okay. So, essentially, uh, I am just taking one fixed time and I am doing all of this thing. And I am showing uniqueness, okay. 
so basically what did we prove we prove that if you have an equation like this what the what is the equation the equation which looks like this okay equation which looks like this ut minus laplacian u equals to f u equals to g on the parabolic boundary then uh, if omega is bounded please remember this is for a bounded domain if omega is bounded then we can say that uh, we can have a unique solution if the solution exists at all okay so with this we are going to end this lecture